this is Han Hao. And this is how he begins his workday. If you're wondering what dangerous job he has, well, he's actually a technical supervisor at Singapore's oldest water park. Usually before the park opens, they will do a visual inspection for all the rides. To make sure that there's no sharpness or anything that is stuck on the right. Han Hao is one of the few people in Singapore who does this. So this can happen. You think you know about our theme parks, but you have no idea. I love theme parks. I think uh, they bring you back to a moment in time where it's your childhood and it's carefree. My earliest memory of going to a water park in Singapore is probably Wild Wild Wet. It's a Wednesday morning at Wild Wild Wet. And with just a few hours until opening, the staff are busy getting the park ready. But wait, why does it look like they're going on a couple of joy rides? Uh, actually, this is part of my job. Before we open, we need to test drive each of the attractions three times. That's once each to make sure the water flow and ride path are correct and there aren't any sharp objects on the slide that can cut you. We need to feel ourselves any abrasion, the water pressure need to be on a certain level. That's why we need to test ourselves. It's enjoyable. Like, we feel like a guest once in a while. Meet Alan. He's Wild Wild Wet's ultimate crash test dummy. When the park added four new rides back in 2017, Alan had the job of personally testing each one of them. Guess how many times it takes to test a new ride before you get to ride it? About five to ten times? I would say 25. 50. 50. Not even close. So based on the rice manufacturer's requirement, uh, we need to do 100 times ride testing. What? Who is this guy and how do I take his job? <laughs> During the ride testing, we were wearing this uh, device, what we call an accelerometer. It's a device that measures the g-force and also the speed. So this will be tabulated into a chart. You know that feeling of being pushed back against your chair when you're zooming around at high speeds? That's g-force, or the power of gravity. Based on the g-force calculated and designed, uh, for example, like free fall, Freefall is Wild Wild Wet's fastest ride. We should not exceed more than 1.8 G. That's more force on your body than when you're sitting in an airplane that's taking off. That's the ride with the highest G-force. And this is the one with the lowest. On this wall, you can hit zero gravity, making you weightless. Aside from testing the rides, Alan was involved in its opening back in 2004. On the lead up to the opening, we are still rushing with all the installations of all the rides. And after all that work to get the $20 million park open on time, we only have three guests that came into the park. We do very minimal advertising because to the lead up, we really do not know when we are ready to open. but they quickly made up for lost time. There's a better way to get wet. We bought 45 seconds TV advertisement slots. We even employ helicopter shoot, shooting from high level advertisement of the whole park itself, uh, leading up to all this hype. Then gradually we see Wild Wet gaining its popularity. We were maxing out our weekends of 6,000 to 7,000. We were surprised by the good response. After all, the only other mega water park in Singapore had closed just three years earlier in 2001. Remember this place? Fantasy Island? 
it cost 54 million Singapore dollars to build, but dried up after just seven years. Its downfall came after two drowning incidents. Tragedy struck Sentosa's Fantasy Island this morning when an eight-year-old boy drowned during a visit to the water theme park. Why Wild Wet managed to survive for the past 19 years, very importantly, is the safety aspect of the park. Because if safety is compromised, it's very hard for us to build back our brand. That's why we have a lot of safety features built into our protocols. I'm proud to say we have zero drowning incidents for the last 19 years. On the other side of town is a familiar amusement park of a different kind. Ever wonder who Uncle Ringo is? A clown? No. He's the uncle who started this whole carnival business. He looked like Ringo. Amusement parks were huge business in early Singapore. They opened in the 1920s and 30s to much fanfare. Themed rides, performances and cabaret shows drew in up to 50,000 visitors a day. But by the 1970s, falling ticket sales brought on by the popularization of television and shopping malls led to their demise. But in 1984, the concept of the amusement park was revived with a travelling carnival. All thanks to this man. I love Uncle Ringo. As a kid, I would take the rides all the time. Uncle Ringo opened me up to the world of adrenaline and roller coasters and fun rides like bumper cars. Oh, that was so fun! <laughs> they had this awesome ride called Top Gun. It was the tallest ride they had. It was a long pole, a little car at the end, and it would just swing and go upside down. I do have a vague recollection of the smell of vomit in the pod. <laughs> Uh, but it was great. We don't have the rights to play this album by the Beatles, but it was this band that inspired the name of Singapore's own carnival star. Hi, I'm Uncle Ringo. When I was young, I was playing in the band. We played the biggest song, I think. I kept long hair. So I got some friends to say, you choose the name, so I choose myself, Ringo. I guess Uncle Wun Chiang wouldn't be as catchy for a carnival name. In 1984, I imported one lot of coin operator kitty rags and from Germany. And my first location was in all the cold storage in Singapore. Yup. This carnival started out on a rather small scale, at the end of a grocery aisle. I was in the chemicals business before, but when my wife was expecting my first child, I was looking around to find a business that can bring happiness to my coming child. During my secondary school days, every time after school, I walked past the amusement park, I saw the family having such a good time, so I found that this business it's a happy business, and I want to be in this business. During the 80s, uh, there was a lot of community events organised by the CC. Every week, we have got orders to create a children corner, that is a carnival. So I brought in about 10 coin operator kiddie rights, and there was a very long queue. So I bring in bigger rights, choo-choo train, carousel, those that can capture bigger capacity kind of equipment. That's how slowly I got into bigger and bigger. And now, the upsized Uncle Ringo has a new face. Meet the new Uncle Ringo. Huh? I knew at the back of my head that uh, I, I was going to take over the business. Yep, she's Uncle Ringo's daughter, the one who inspired him to start it all. I had like free play, unlimited play on all his rides. She used to work for one of the big four accountancy firms as a risk consultant. Today, the only risks she's accounting for 
are the right. So prior to 2011, amusement rights were actually not regulated. In 2010, the authorities um, contacted my dad, letting him know that a new act was going to be uh, in place to look into the safety of amusement rights. And so my dad told me that, oh, he's a bit worried because he is um, not too well versed in this area. And that was when I decided to join him in 2011. Whether it's under your block, at the mall, or an event in the heart of town, you will see me almost everyone. Melvin is the ringmaster who juggles the running of up to eight carnivals all at the same time. Right now, we are here in Bayfront Avenue at Marina Site. This is our four days event here. We have been here since Thursday, and today is our last night here, as you can see. We are packing up to go to our next event uh, that will be in uh, Pasar Malam. Uncle Ringo has held thousands of carnivals in the last 39 years. And Melvin's job is to make sure there is this one ride at every fair. Oh, the pirate ship. This is the most popular one. This is the Dai Dai Matai one. I went as a kid with um, a bunch of friends and a girl that I liked, and then I puked after one of the rides. <laughs> and she never talked to me after that. It was probably the Viking. That's the one that gives you that thrill. Get ready to walk the plank, me hearties. Ha ha! This rocking ship with its seasick thrills has endured in popularity for almost four decades. It's so popular that Uncle Ringo has not one, not two, but four Viking ships. And if you have the cash to splash and the space to spare, you can even bring one of the ships and any of these rides to you. So we also do rentals, like private events. And it'll cost you just... Uh, somewhere upwards of 2000 Yeah, for one ride. Do you have any celebrity clients? Uh, yeah, a couple, but mainly for their children. What has been trending is um, uh, birthday parties. It was not very common, say, uh, 10 years ago, but now we see a couple every month. Yeah. And that's not all the special services Uncle Ringo offers. Uncle Ringo is also Uncle Fix-It. We have been engaged to do maintenance and operations of rides that are not owned by us as well. Including this Ferris wheel in one of Singapore's hottest nightclubs. Milo here is one of the few people in Singapore who can fix your ride. I'm working in Hungary going at 26 years in the electrical maintenance work. My boss buy from the right from Europe, then bring the people teach me to how to fix up. So, if you ever need help fixing a bumper car, choo-choo train, or an F1 racer, you know who to call. At Wild Wild Wet, ride operator Zuki Flea too has a very special skill. Maybe you like uh, 150, 160 centimeter. My job is all about the high power. If you do this long enough, then you can engage the high weight. Uh, let's say if they're too light, they might start in the middle of the slide. Too heavy, you might fall out from the right. But I cannot assume, so everything I must measure first. The way they want, I cannot see. <laughs> Good answer. I'm guessing not everyone likes to play Guess My Weight. Ah, uh, yeah, usually the female, they don't like it. Uh, yeah. So, after climbing up all these stairs, how do people take it when you tell them they can't go on the ride? Sometimes they will say angry, but it's part of the job. Every ride we have uh, two operators, one at the top, so the dispatcher, and one at the bottom, the uh, loader. 
the dispatcher will do the height, weight, all the loose items, make sure they wear proper attire to enjoy the ride. And at the bottom, we need to check whether they enjoy the slide safely or not. So, do you prefer being on the top or the bottom of the ride? Yeah, I will see it through the top. Lah. That's because... They come out the water, then they cough out water inside. And uh, my face, uh, disgusting. Not to mention the other horrors lurking in the water. Confession time! Have you ever peed in the pool? Oh, everyone's peed in the pool. <laughs> and you don't just pee in a pool, you pee next to your friends so they can feel the warmth. What? That's disgusting. Never. I would never do that. Whoever tells you they hasn't is lying. <laughs> okay, then yes. <laughs> To clean up all that pee. This is one of the five farm roads that we have. All the five farm roads are designed to take care of 2.5 million cubic of water every single second. Whoa, that's enough water to fill 1,000 Olympic sized swimming pools. So we need all this equipment here to keep the water in the park clean. So, this is where you keep the clock. Acid? You pump acid into the water? Yes, we do. Basically, we pump hydrochloric acid and sodium hypochlorite. The purpose of hydrochloric acid is to stabilize the pH and the sodium hypochlorite is for the chlorine effect. The chlorine is needed to sanitize the water to kill all the bacteria in the water. Water from every attraction in the park passes through these sensors. So we have the pH sensor and the chlorine sensor. So for pH, we need to maintain it at 7.2 to 7.8 and for chlorine, 1 to 3 ppm. Sounds like you need a PhD in science to work here, or at least to have paid attention in chemistry class. What happens if it goes out of that range? If the water is too alkaline or too acidic, gas will have different reactions. Uh, it will range from redness in eyes, burning sensation on the skin, and also irritation to the airway. In the event that the pH or the coin is out of the range, the controller will start the necessary pumps to pump in the acid or the sodium hypochlorite. But sometimes there's something lurking in the depths of the pool that strikes fear even into the heart of Alan. So sometimes during our park operations, we do find feces in the water. Feces? Why? Who? Wow, the stuff that you can't unsee, you know. But down here, we name all these terms as UFO, Unidentified Foreign Object. Yes, we use it as a code name. We have to clear the gas out of the pool, we clear out the UFO. We have to come here, push the chlorine up to sanitize the water. And we have to test the water first to make sure that it's within range. Most of the time, all these UFO came from young children. If when it comes to school holidays, when we have higher crowds that comes into the park, we can see that uh, three times a week. Taking on Pooh Patrol and safeguarding these waters are a crack team of lifeguards. With 16 attractions spanning 40,000 square meters, it's no wonder Wild Wild Wet needs Roughly around 25 laggards on duty at one time. We actually make sure that our staff stay at the station roughly about 45 minutes to an hour, and then we rotate around so we don't build our boredom. We are trained to have this 10 to 30 Oh yes, I'm familiar. That's when you take a 20-minute break for every 10 minutes of work, right? No. This 10 to 30 means 10 seconds to spot, just in distress, and then another 20 seconds to actually rescue and render it. So for drowning, actually, there's no signs. For what we normally see in movies, where they're actually struggling and call for help. Okay. That's driving too slow. 
we see early stages like possibility of drowning, so we just enter the pool and assist them before drowning happens. Rescue the gate, free up, afloat, place your gate, open airway, and one more thing. Three long research, alright. So basically, yeah. Yeah, ready? Okay, good. Keeping things afloat at his carnivals is Uncle Ringo himself. I still come and make sure everything runs well. All these pirate ships have been with me for the past 30 years. One of the oldest right there. Yeah. Some of the rides which uh, my dad bought like 30 years ago, they are still functioning very safely, very well now. Hey Ben. This might be the exact Viking ride you threw up on. Yeah, <laughs> what? <laughs> so, is the Viking ship your favourite too? My favourite ride is still the bumper car. <laughs> Same for me as well. She's running most of the show, but when it comes to operation, I still help up. So what's it like to work with Dad? Very enriching and very frustrating at the same time. He's been in this line for 39 years. So uh, there's no one uh, who can be a better mentor to me than him. Those days, I used to bring her down to the fun fair when she was young. Now she brings her children down. So the grandfather of the three generations play together. So the kind of feeling is very, very unique. We have been travelling for uh, 39 good years and one of the plans uh, in the upcoming years will be actually to have a brick and mortar area, like a permanent place. We'll still do travelling carnivals, um, just that it will be nice to have a permanent place where people can always go to. The fun never ends. <laughs>